Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For the Lord your God am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousands generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do your, all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them. But rested the seventh day, therefore the Lord blesseth the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in this land that the Lord God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. When all the people witness the thunder and lightning, the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking, they were afraid and trembled and stood at a distance and said to Moses, you speak to us and we will listen. But do not let God speak to us or we will die. Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid, for God has come only to test you and to put the fear of him upon you so that you may do not sin. Then the people stood at a distance while Moses drove nearer to the thick darkness where God was. The word of God for us, the people of God, certainly we give thanks to our God. Join me for a word of prayer. In me, in this moment, come Holy Spirit, come right now. Come Lord God, as fire shut up in my bones. Come Lord God and speak a word so that we will know we have truly been with you, God. Break open the bread of life in such a way that our eyes will see clearer, that we will be taken a little higher, that we will join together as one community in listening to what the Spirit says to us today. And we'll be ever mindful to give you all glory, honor, and all praise. In Jesus' name, the people of God said, amen. 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 Certainly, I give thanks to God for being with you here today, the Rainbow Church, and for your pastor, uh, Reverend Lee Yates, who certainly, yes, we, we do go back a ways. Amen. And I'm so thankful for his energy and for how he always includes all different types of people in ministry. Uh, that is something that I see God having been allow that which he planted on this coast <laughs> to begin to flourish and grow uh, and to lead him into ministry with you all. So thank you. Thank you for this invitation and thank you for a time of gathering. The Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments. Oh, we know so much about the Ten Commandments. 
And truly the 10 commandments are simple, right? Let us see and discuss together. It's interesting that I find myself these days in a situation where so many things are reminding me of where I am in my journey called life. This past uh, December, I had to go in and to get some uh, new eye examination. And I was even given a new prescription. But what was interesting is that they had to engage me about how I did with these very lenses that I have on right now. The lenses that I got the year before, which are my first progressive lenses. Those of you that have progressive lenses or bifocals, if you will, uh, you may know something about this. It's really interesting. And it showed me that, you know, I am getting a little bit older. And there are ways in which our bodies remind us of the years and experiences that they have logged. And so then even this pair of glasses reminded me of that and that discussion again with my optometrist about how I was faring with this and how I had to describe to her how, yeah, well, you know, I, I got a little nick on them because I think I, I kept having to look up and look down and try to get a, a handle on how to actually use these lenses as opposed to what I was doing before. And that is just simply get, getting a pair of readers, if you will, and taking them on and taking them off. And now I find myself, you know, doing this with these lenses. I had to get used to seeing in a different way. In like manner, a couple of weeks ago, I went to one of my doctors and I tried to ask her what stage this old woman's body was in. And she said, don't worry about that. You just let God handle that. But I tell you this, you don't want to get too far, too far along in this new stage of, of where you are as a woman because the weight that you have picked up will not easily get off. And I looked at her and I said to her, yep, I'm in a new stage of my existence, a new part of this journey. Again, we find ourselves in different places in our lives on this journey that we talked about even in our call to worship. And perhaps even for the people of Israel, even as they were in a particular place in our Exodus text, God spoke to them for a particular time. But as God is bringing the text back to our own ears, our own remembrance right now, we have logged some miles. We have been through some experiences. Our bodies and our societies show the aging and the experiences of what we have collectively faced together and individually. And perhaps then the Ten Commandments may not be as simple. For, for the people, as they looked at this book, they were coming out of a time in which they had been oppressed and, and they had been given that liberation by God. And they have found themselves a people coming together and in this wilderness and asking themselves what is going to be next. And God saw them dealing with each other and even complaining, if you will, and began to say that I have to put some reins on this. We got to put some bumpers in place. We got to put a way in which we put some values in this thing in which they're dealing with me in a certain, certain way and dealing with each other in a certain way. We have to put some bumpers on how we are together. And that's what it is. The Ten Commandments are the bumpers that we are to work within. And sure, for, for the people, it seems so simple uh, because they were making the, the graven images. Oh, you should have no, no God before me. They were doing things that were out of the will of God. 
They were not taking care of themselves and they needed to be reminded perhaps of how as an identified people, a people claiming in covenant with God, what God would do from generation to generation. They were just forming, if you will. You know, the Bible is, is that which is a story of a people. And so as we begin the, the, the beginning in the story of this people, we see how they're developing. But for us, a people who had years logged. What is God saying for us? What are the, the, the progressive ways, the lenses in which God is trying to give to us so that we can see things differently? One of my colleagues, Reverend Karen Georgia Thompson, y'all know her. She leads our wider church ministries and she often uh, talks about this whole notion of global. We need to think in a global way, in a way in which we are global and local. One of the things that I see God doing with us today is putting a pair of lenses on our eyes where we are able to see beyond our back doors, beyond our state, beyond our borders, to the world that God has all around us. But God also reminds us in seeing our community and our people that we as a people cannot have idols. But what does that mean for us, for a people today, for such a time as this? Well, simply put this way, it's easy for some of our, our global community uh, siblings to see things in a different way than sometimes we in, in the U.S. may view it. They're able to point out our market fundamentalism. Oh, yes, the, the whole notion of being fundamental is a term that we love to, to just toss around and we love to talk about evangelicals and, and, and what they're doing and what they're not doing and how they're not uh, creating a just world for all. But perhaps then what we really need to do is see how we in this country or even the values that this country begins to put on us and how we have been told to be in the world but not of the world but have not necessarily reacted well to that but we've taken on the values and we've lifted up capitalism in a way in which we are, are, are interacting in the marketplace as if truly there has to be poor people among us. God says to us not to have any idols. God says to us to have a relationship with God where God, who is the one that is a God of abundance and that abundance can not only just be given to us, but be given to God's world because God created this good world. And God beckons us to be a part of God recreating the world. The relationship and lenses that the simple uh, Ten Commandments views with us right now or allows us to see this whole notion of what some may even in a simpler way call generational curses. Oh, what is this in this text? Lord God, I'm pointing at my phone because if, if like me, you have your Bible on your phones, but what is it about this text and this whole notion of the children uh, will, will have to deal with the iniquity of the parents? We don't believe in stuff like this, this generational curses, but do we? Perhaps it is that God is beckoning us to recognize that if we haven't gotten things right in our generation, we're going to leave a mess for our children to clean up. If we haven't embraced all of our residents in such a way that the dreamers are able to have a path to citizenship, then we would find in every single administration having to deal with the same issues. If we have found ourselves not dealing with this whole notion of structural racism and structural heterosexism in ways in which we are mis mis uh, 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 misogynistic, then we will find ourselves giving this on to our children and them having to deal with how we have been unfaithful to God. The curse of having to deal with the created order in such a way 
that the people in Texas, where they are used to such sunny days, have now been faced with truly what it is for us to not do well about our covenant with God and being good stewards of God's earth and how all of nature has gone haywire. We will be faced with that from generation to generation if we have not gotten this right. The Ten Commandments, simple, right? But it's interesting because then we go down to this, this last part of the Ten Commandments and we see how God is beckoning us to be together with God's people. How God is beckoning us to love each other, to not murder. Hello, anti-death penalty. To not steal. Hello, how we've treated our indigenous peoples in this country as well as all over the world and how we're even fighting even right now in such a way that HR 40, the, the, the bill where we would look at studying uh, uh, proposals for reparatory justice for African-Americans, people don't wanna talk about that, but God says to us today, thou shall not steal. God says to us today that you shall not covenant. Covet, what is your neighbor's possessions? God says to us today that there are certain ways in which we should be together just because we are a people, a humankind together in community. But yet, in our society, we find ourselves hitching value not to people because of simply them having the light of God in them, but because they may have a job. Our healthcare is tied to whether or not you have a job, not whether or not you are simply a human being. You don't get free water just because God created the oceans and, 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 and water. You don't get free water because of that. We, we have it in such a way that we are tying it to whether or not you have enough money. And if you don't have enough money, you can get your water cut off and your credit can be, can be pinged because you don't have enough money to even have water. Ten Commandments, simple, right? We blogged a lot of years and even in 2020, we logged a lot of time of mental distress, of seeing someone with their life drained out of them while an officer so-called of the law had his knee on his neck. And certainly we can't unsee those things, but we can bring our collective experience to this moment and say to us, have God whisper in our ears what God wants us to do with this new covenant, how we are to be with each other in this time. I'll end with this story. I dated someone when I was in graduate school at Howard University. He was an epidemiologist and he was also an officer in the armed services. And he had a very high clearance and I remember a time in which he had a, if you say, tough day at the office. And he came and we were at dinner and he simply said to me, there are so many things that go on in this world that sometimes people know about and sometimes they do not. And he said, I've seen so many things 
that it's hard for me to unsee them. And truthfully, I cannot. But what I can do is with the knowledge that I have, I can make this world better through the lens of my experiences. God is saying that to us. Through the lens of struggling with mental health ourselves and even communally during this lockdown time, through the lens of recognizing that certainly we are connected with the global community and what happens in, in one hemisphere affects another, through the lens by which we recognize that we are to be our siblings keeper and that we should have free access to healthcare, we should have paid family leave, through that lens, we can now roll up our sleeves and enter into new covenant, not only with God, but with each other. The Ten Commandments, simple, right? Won't you join me in enacting a new just world for all? Thank you.